Welcome to the Ultra Human Experience. This session is free for you for the complete experience. Please download the Ultra Human app. <sighs> it starts with just the slightest feeling at the back of your mind. Whether you're in a conference room, at a dinner date, or a class after lunch, it slowly takes shape until you realize it's there and you cannot ignore it any longer. Sometimes it's welcome, usually it's not, and you have to try and push it away. But the more you try, the stronger this sensation becomes, and then before you know it, you've broken out into a long, deep, soul-satisfying yawn. You stretch your body and open up your lungs. You've taken in a deep dose of oxygen and expelled out all the tiredness you have in your system. It's not just a yawn. It's a short but refreshing reboot to your system. A yawn has multiple functions. When you're sitting in a conference room with the air conditioning on ice mode and your boss is droning on about an important project, a yawn helps increase the body's temperature. When you're in a classroom, sitting through a sinfully boring lecture, right after a heavy lunch, a yawn is a way for your body to tell you that it needs more oxygen. When you're listening to a loved one, repeat a story you've heard more times than your own name. A yawn helps you wake up and keep the relationship intact. A good full yawn should leave you feeling like you've just stepped out of a spa after a nice, relaxing massage, mani-pedi, or exfoliation scrub. It should even feel better in some ways because you don't have to pay for it. Of course, there are different kinds of yawns, and each one does something slightly different to the body and the brain. Let's start with what I like to call the hideaway yawn. This is the one that you don't fully give in to, but still helps you reset and feel rejuvenated quickly. It doesn't draw too much attention to itself and still manages to give the brain a little bit of a breather. It's more of a deep and lovely sigh, really, than a full yawn. Just a little pressure from near the back of your neck to help you pop your ears. These are the mini yawns, the ones you would hide, like the kind you get when your partner is talking about their parents. When the professor is talking about an important chapter that you will definitely be tested on in the finals, or when your boss is telling you about a deadline that you absolutely, definitely, totally should not miss, and you already know for sure that you will. This can be a sly, quick yawn that you give in to when the urge takes over you and you can't hold it back any longer. Sometimes you can conceal it with a carefully placed arm or by turning your head at just the right angle away from the person you're talking to. Sometimes you don't even need to open your mouth fully to perform the hideaway yawn. 
just letting the back of your throat fill up with air and exhaling discreetly through a corner of your mouth can be enough. Of course, experienced yawners will know what you're up to from the signs. Your mouth may not open wide, but your nostrils will flare and your eyes will grow big and teary. But since we all need to give in to this yawn at some point, most people know that they should pretend not to notice it when the person in front of them sneaks a quick one. Historians have believed that the hideaway yawn was invented for one purpose alone, to avoid getting into trouble. It's the kind of yawn a cave woman yawned when a caveman rambled on and on about his day, and she needed to pretend to listen so that his ego wouldn't crumble, and he would continue to believe he was the strongest and fastest caveman for miles around. Since that prehistoric era, the reliable and efficient hideaway yawn has been adapted to many different scenarios. Next, we look at the stretcheroo. The stretcheroo was invented for and is perfect for mid-level management. For years now, middle management has been at the receiving end of problems from those above and below them on the steep corporate ladder on which they stand, delicately balanced. They get dumped on from upper management, and those in positions lower than them blow smoke up their behinds, only to gossip about them and criticize them when they're not around. The stretcheroo is perfect for a person caught in such a position, allowing them to ease up and get some relief from the stress that comes from being stuck in the middle. First, the yawner lets their head roll back gently. They may choose to also stretch their arms over their heads. Then they open their mouths wide till they feel a full stretch in their jaws. As they do, they take in a deep and satisfying lung full of air, and then the bliss of exhaling all that air in a quick, comforting rush. The yawn is best accompanied by a gentle, soothing sound like a trumpet it's been quietly tuned before a jazz concert. A third important type of yawn is the customary yawn. Somewhere between the hideaway yawn and the stretcheroo in terms of its likelihood of drawing attention to itself and perhaps getting you into trouble. It's a more polite, diplomatic version of the stretcheroo. You don't lift your hands over your head, but you do let your back stretch nicely. Unlike the stretcheroo, no sound accompanies this yawn. Rather, it's a deep and silent drawing in of air, which is then held for a moment before being exhaled in a long, satisfying gush. When you exhale, you let your chest lift a few inches up and keep your mouth about half open. Emotionally, this yawn lets you feel as if you've taken the world of troubles that is resting on your shoulders and you put them down for just a moment. A good customary yawn leaves you feeling the tension has evaporated between your shoulder blades. But if you want to experience the full potential of a yawn, what you're looking for is the king of all yawns, the carefree yawn.
It begins from the back of your neck and goes all the way up to the tips of your toes. You need to stretch your back, your legs, your stomach, your arms, your feet, and every part of you in between. You need to reach for the basement and the ceiling, both at the same time. And accompanying this grand symbolism of laziness and lethargy is a loud, booming sound that originates from the depths of your soul and which expels with it every negative emotion from your body. Every bone in your body needs to crack and release nitrogen and stress. The carefree yawn is the most recognized and deadliest of all yawns. It's loud, it's explosive, and it's contagious. It's the kind of yawn you want to keep repeating. What's so great about the carefree yawn? Well, it's the single most satisfying yawn to have been discovered. If other yawns are like little bursts of rejuvenation, this yawn is like a full spa treatment, even if it only lasts a few seconds. It leaves you feeling as if you've splashed your face with clear water from a cold mountain brook. You feel refreshed. It is said by no reliable source that the first woman to perform the carefree yawn was an overworked homemaker who was worn down to the bone in the work of taking care of her children, cooking food, and ensuring that her husband didn't die from complications caused by tooth decay. The woman needed a full day of rest, but could not get one. So, in the middle of a mad, rushed, soul-sucking day, she just took a few seconds off and invented the carefree yawn. The rest, as they say, is history. Today, we see this yawn performed by students during exam season, teachers during exam seasons, parents right after exam season when they have to stay up with their kids, and of course anyone who works a desk job. It provides relief and comfort to anyone who is stuck in a stagnant situation, whether it's academic, professional, or personal. <sighs> and with this, we come to an end of this discussion of the different types of yawns in the world. Hopefully, you now know enough about them to try the different ones whenever you're in the mood. Remember, you don't need to spend hundreds of dollars on a spa day. Instead, just yawn like this. <sighs> uh -huh. Refreshing. Good night and sweet dreams. <laughs>